Hello, my name is Andy Hill, and I'm here to talk to you about continuation. Let's get started. This presentation will provide an overview of the internal erosion phase of continuation. It will discuss how to assess existing filters for particle retention and other factors that affect filter performance, as well as constricted or non-erodible exits that may be associated with defects in embedded structures. We'll talk a little bit about some more less likely factors. We'll provide a brief toolbox overview and then quickly talk about the references for this presentation. Overview of internal erosion phase. Continuation is the second phase of internal erosion. Once erosion is initiated, it will continue unless the eroding forces are reduced or the passage of the eroded particles is impeded in some way. Thus, erosion may be interrupted or arrested by filtering action in downstream materials in the embankment or the foundation. Filter criteria basics. Dam engineers have known since the 1950s and 1960s that the most efficient way of stopping the erosion process is to zone the dam and to provide filters. Terzaghi is generally credited with the development of modern filter criteria. Sherard, in his 1984 paper, conducted a laboratory study adding base oil categories and regrading to the procedure. If the D85 of the base soil, or D85B, is the same size as the effective diameter of the filter, then D15 of the filter is equal to nine times the D85 size of the base soil. This criterion applies to base soil category one, which has a fines content of greater than 85%. Filter design concepts. There are two fundamental functions of filters. Particle retention is the focus of this presentation as a defensive measure against internal erosion. The other function is permeability. Criteria for permeability vary between federal agencies, but all compare D15 of the filter to D15 of the base. Filter placement at Hens Dam in Queensland, Australia, using flow truck is shown in the photo courtesy of Mark Foster. Filter action for retention. Filters are designed to prevent particle movement from intergranular seepage flow where defects are present in a base soil or seepage water flows through pore spaces of a soil mass in an embankment or foundation. A properly designed filter prevents movement of base soils by seepage forces at a discharge face. The filter supports the discharge face such that bridging between closely spaced contact points prevents any movement of base soil particles into the filter. The filter is also sufficiently coarse to allow seepage water to escape freely. Details of filter action. This slide illustrates the details of filter action. Eroding soil in the crack is caught at the filter face, stopping flow in the crack. High gradients cause hydraulic fracturing from the crack to the adjacent filter. Hydraulic fracturing from high gradients between the water in the crack and the adjacent filter has caused some widening of the filter gate near the crack. The high gradients cause further widening of the filter cake until the gradient is reduced. The filter cake, having a very low permeability, covers the width of the crack and some distance on each side of the crack. The remaining filter is open for collecting seepage flow through the pores of the soil between cracks. Dam zoning considerations. Dam zoning can be grouped based on their capability of providing control for internal erosion in the embankment. This is based on the provision for or lack of filters and statistics of failure and incidents Foster et al. 2000. 
It does not take account of details of dam zoning, design, and construction. Therefore, it is only a general guide. Exit conditions. Three types of exit conditions are generally considered. An unfiltered exit is a free or open face. An inadequately filtered exit may still provide adequate defense even if it does not meet modern filter, filter design criteria. This requires an evaluation of the base filter compatibility for particle retention discussed later. The last exit condition is a constricted exit where the internal erosion occurs through a non-erodible open defect in a through penetrating structure or rock foundation. Open or unfiltered exits in the foundation. This figure shows examples of various open or unfiltered exits in the foundation. It includes a potentially inadequate foundation filter at the base of the dam, the sand layer daylighting on the downstream side, the sand layer eroding into an open work gravel layer that daylights downstream of the dam, and the sand layer eroding into open joints in the bedrock that daylights downstream of the dam. Assessing existing filters. The problem with existing filters. Many existing dams have filter or transition zones coarser than required by modern filter criteria, such as no erosion condition. Foster and Fell, in their 2001 paper, conducted additional research with emphasis on dispersive soils and additional erosion boundaries to help answer the questions of if a concentrated leak develops through through the core, will a filter transition pr uh, zone prevent continuing erosion? How much erosion is required for self-filtering to occur? And can this amount of erosion be tolerated? Assessing existing filters continued. Fell et al. in their 2008 paper recommends selecting representative gradations of the original or regraded base soil which are indicative of the finer 5% of the base soil gradations, such as the fine base soil gradation, the average gradation, such as the average base gradation, and the coarser 5% of the base soil gradations, such as the coarse base soil gradation. In this scenario, the representative base soil gradation represents 90% of all gradation tests. Regrading the base soil. The concept of regrading the base soil was developed by Sherard to account for broadly graded soils. Broadly graded soils can be internally unstable, such as inadequate particle retention, and regrading corrects for this phenomenon. Permitting inclusion of gravel with the base soil gradation will lead to large D85 of the base soil and subsequently large D15 of the filter. Since gravel particles do not have any particle retention capability broadly graded or gap graded soils, the resulting filter gradation will be too coarse to provide particle retention of finer fraction of the base soil. Regrading is performed on the number four sib so that the maximum size is 4.75 millimeters. Obtain correction factor by dividing 100 by the percent passing the number four sib. Multiply the percentage passing each sib's size of the base soil smaller than the number four sieve by this correction factor. Logic diagram for regrading base soil. This logic diagram is used to determine which base soils require regrading and the operation used to achieve the regrading. When a soil does not contain any gravel or particles larger than the number four sieve, regrading is not required. If the soil does contain gravel, it still may not require regrading if it meets all three properties listed uh, in the middle box there. <clears throat> if one or more of the properties are not met, the soil should be regraded using the procedure shown. If the maximum particle size is larger than 4.75 millimeters, or the number four sieve, then regrade so that the maximum size is 4.75 millimeters. If the base soil is gap graded, it must be regraded on the closest sieve to the particle size that is missing. The no erosion filter test was developed by Sherard and Dunnigan. Particle retention criteria for modern filter design is based on the no erosion filter or 
NEF concept. Continuing erosion filter test. Foster and Feller developed a device to evaluate the potential for continuing erosion by modifying the no erosion filter test as follows. Water passing through the filter during tests was collected and the eroded materials dried and weighed to determine the loss of the base oil required to seal the filter. Progressively coarser filters were used until the filter was not sealed. Thicker base specimens were used to allow for greater erosion losses. Foster and Fell 2001. Based on observed eroded materials from continuing erosion filter or CEF tests, erosion conditions were established depending on the ratio of particle and pore sizes. Thus, erosion will either not continue, such as no erosion, or stop after only minor erosion, such as some erosion, or stop after a significant amount of erosion, such as excessive erosion, or continue, such as continuing erosion. These erosion conditions were derived from CEF tests using very high water pressures, such as full tap pressure of 300 kPa, and a preformed hole. Therefore, the results are likely conservative. The following slides discuss these four erosion boundaries. No erosion boundary. For the no erosion condition, the filter is finer than the no erosion boundary and seals with no or practically no erosion of the base material. When evaluating an existing filter, perform an initial screening using the no erosion design criteria. Modern filter criteria used by reclamation, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers are adapted from FEMA 2011. The D15 of the filter is compared to the D85 of the base for various ranges of fines content represented by the base soil category. The no erosion filter design criteria for dispersive soils is more stringent as shown at the right of the table. If a filter fails the no erosion screening, evaluate the other erosion boundaries using Foster and Fell 2001 methodology to assess how much erosion is required for cell filtering to occur and whether or not it can be tolerated. For the continuing erosion condition, the filter is too coarse to allow eroded base materials to seal the filter, allowing unrestricted erosion of the base soil. Thus, the con this condition and the no erosion condition are the bound for filter performance. As mentioned previously, the effective pore diameter of the filter such as the minimum diameter of pores that will allow soil particles to pass, is about the D15 of the filter divided by 9. The D95 of the base soil is compared against this opening size for the continuing erosion boundary. Some and excessive erosion boundaries. These boundaries were estimated based on a comparison of laboratory filter tests the case history data of poor filter performance, which showed progressive sealing of the filter zone, as shown in the figure at the lower right. The excessive erosion boundary occurs between the sum erosion and continuing erosion boundaries, where erosion of base soil is excessive before it seals. Filters will eventually seal, but only after significant erosion of the base soil, and there may be large leakage flows before the filter seals by clogging of the filter by the eroded base soil. The sum erosion boundary occurs between the no erosion and excessive erosion boundaries, where the filter quickly seals after particles of the base material clog the surface of the filter. Excessive erosion boundary. This slide presents the criteria for the excessive erosion boundary. The equation of D15 of the filter is roughly equal to 0.34 times 1.07 to the power of the percentage of the core material expressed as a percent was obtained by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers from a curve fit to the 0.25 grams per square centimeter line in the CEF test shown on the previous slide. Erosion boundaries. After estimating all four erosion boundaries, Plot them on the original filter gradation curves on the D15 line, as shown in this figure. If the filter gradation must be adjusted because segregation or washout is expected, 
then plot that curve as well. Proportions for erosion categories. This figure zooms in on the D15 line from the previous figure so that erosion boundaries are easier to examine for estimating proportions. The suggested approach is to estimate the proportions for continuing, excessive, and some erosion categories first, and then calculate the proportions for the no erosion category by subtracting the sum of the other proportions from one. Thus, the erosion conditions are mutually exclusive. Probability estimates. Fell et al. from their 2008 paper recommends making an initial estimate of the probabilities of no erosion, some erosion, excessive erosion, and continuing erosion by calculating the sum product of the percentage of the base soil gradations and the estimated percentage of no erosion, some erosion, excessive erosion, and continuing erosion for the coarse average and fine base soil gradations. <clears throat> In corresponds to the representative base soil gradation, that is, as a percentage of all grad gradation tests, and 1 minus n over 100, all divided by 2, corresponds to the percentage finer or coarser of the base soil. This is also done for the adjusted gradation curve if segregation or washout is expected. Using the example from the previous slide, the representative base soil gradation, or n, is 80%. Therefore, there is 10% finer and 10% coarser than representative grading. In this example, the proportions were also estimated for adjusted fine gradation, excuse me, adjusted filter gradation due to segregation or washout. Lastly, assess how representative the gradation may or may not be. Use judgment to adjust the calculated percentages to take into account the effects of other factors, such as the distribution of the core and filter gradations in the fill, borrow area variability, and selective placement of materials. The probabilities should not be used directly in a risk assessment, but rather used to help develop a list of more and less likely factors during a team elicitation of probability estimates. Event tree considerations. Fell et al. 2008 suggested that each erosion category be carried through the event tree as shown. However, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers makes a single estimate of the likelihood of an unfiltered exit because filter evaluation is just one aspect. The likelihood of continuation of erosion is based on not just the likelihood of the continuing erosion boundary being exceeded, but also considers the likelihood of excessive erosion as well as considering how far the material is from the no erosion boundary, and the variability of the gradations from fine to coarse extremes, thickness of the filtering unit, upstream to downstream continuity, and extension to a free or open face. Other filter considerations. Filter considerations. In addition to the erosion boundaries for particle retention, other filter considerations include durability resulting in degradation due to weathering or breakdown of weaker particle shapes, cracking based on the fines content, present of plastic, plastic fines or cementation as well as overcompaction resulting in brittle zones, segregation during storing, hauling, dumping, spreading, and compacting, and washout due to internal instability. Some of these occur during handling, placement, and compaction. Filter considerations continued. Additional filter considerations continued from the previous slide include heave due to insufficient cover if the filter is on the only material on the downstream embankment face, sufficient permeability of the filter and downstream zones to perform the required drainage function, continuity to an open face or extensive void spaces in coarse soil, soils or bedrock for eroded fine particles, or inadequate filter width. The susceptibility to cracking depends on fines content, cementation, or presence of plastic fines. Cementation increases the likelihood of cracking. Even small amounts of silt in broadly graded silty sandy gravel filters may result in cracking. Research by Reclamation and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has shown that very dense, clean, compacted filters may hold a crack. Typical criteria to reduce cracking potential include limiting the fines content, the plasticity of the fines, and compaction effort. 
To limit the in-place fines content to 5%, it is often necessary to limit the off-the-belt fines content to 3% at the quarry or crusher stockpile to account for breakdown during hauling, transportation, placing, and compacting. Compaction of filters should be minimal. Very densely compacted sands can result in overly brittle zones that have less than desirable self-healing properties, thus sustain a crack. Excessive compaction, particularly of crushed rock, can lead to the creation of sufficient fines in the filter to make them susceptible to cracking. Dynamic loading by the compactor is the critical component in compacting granular materials. Compaction of filter and drain materials should be adequate to produce sufficient density to preclude, preclude liquefaction, limit consolidation, and provide adequate strength. Minimum density should generally be not less than 70% relative density, particularly if liquefaction is a concern. Reclamation and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers tested commonly used filter materials, moist concrete sand with less than 5% non-plastic fines, and single-stage and two-stage vertical chimney filter configurations. The densities at which the tested filter sands flowed freely and self-healed were very low, much lower than anticipated. In most, if not all cases, it would be difficult to consistently achieve this low of densities in the field. And if achieved, it may be impractical to ensure that they remain at such low target density due to construction of uh, and associated with loading from adjacent and overlying fill. Inclusion of a second stage, like a gravel zone, appears to improve, uh, excuse me, to provide a more practical solution to designing a chimney filter capable of healing and sealing a concentrated leak when subject to severe cracking than close control of density of a single-stage sand filter. Test results confirm that the two-stage filters are very robust and retain functionality even when subjected to large cracks upstream and downstream of the chimney in the laboratory. In the lower right, the crack was sustained in dense concrete sand, but not in gravel. The sand at the interface with the gravel is similar to the previous filter action sides. Likelihood of holding a crack. This slide provides suggested guidance for assessing the likelihood of holding a crack based on fines content and cementation. The descriptors and probabilities should be used to help develop a list of more and less likely factors during a team elicitation, elicitation of probability estimates. Event tree for filter cracking. This slide illustrates how the generic event tree can be adapted if filter cracking is a concern. In this example, a node was added to assess the likelihood of common cause cracking in the zone two or pervious shell due to excessive fines. If zone two is cracked, an unfiltered exit exists in the next node as shown in the upper branches. Otherwise, the continuation node assesses the particle retention capability in the complementary ne next node or the uncracked zone two, the pervious shell. Susceptibility to segregation. Segregation is the tendency of large particles in a given mass of aggregate to gather together whenever the material is being loaded, transported, or otherwise disturbed. Material placed in a pile off of a conveyor or loaded from a chute or from a hopper segregates because the larger particles roll to the sides of the stockpiles or piles within the hauling unit. Material dumped from a truck, front loader, or other placing equipment almost always segregates with the severity of the segregation corresponding to the height of the drop, moisture content, and the maximum size of particles. Soils which are susceptible to internal instability are also susceptible to segregation. Segregation can cause pockets of coarse zones that may not be filter compatible with the material being prote protected. However, to be a significant contributor to the likelihood of continuation, an entire lift of the filter zone has to be segregated from upstream to downstream, which is very unlikely except for very narrow zones. And the segregated layer has to correspond with a flaw or concentrated seep in the embankment. This slide shows the criteria to reduce the potential for segregation. The upper table provides minimum and maximum uh, 
article finds particle sizes for filters. The bottom table provides the filter design criteria to limit the maximum allowable D90 of the filter size based on the minimum D10 of the filter size. Evaluate the susceptibility of the filter material to internal instability, the geometric criteria, as described in Internal Instability Suffusion Suffusion Presentation. Gradation after segregation or washout. For filters that are susceptible to segregation or internal instability, Fell et al. in their 2008 paper recommended an approximate method of estimating the D15 of the filter after segregation or washout. The procedure assumes 50% of the finer soil fraction is segregated out, or 50% of the unstable or erodible soil fraction is washed out. However, at the International Internal Erosion Symposium in 2016, they modified that procedure and recommended assuming 100% of the finer soil fraction is segregated out, or 100% of the unstable or erodible soil fraction is washed out. This conclusion is documented in Douglas et al. in their 2019 paper. Gradation after segregation or washout. Douglas et al. in their 2019 paper recommended assuming that 100% of the finer fra soil fraction is segregated out or that 100% of the unstable or erodible soil fraction is washed out. The following steps describe the approximate method for estimating the D15 of the filter after segregation or washout. Step one, as denoted by the numbers on the slide. Select the point of maximum curvature on the original gradation curve. For broadly graded soils, like those on the left, it is the point of maximum inflection of the gradation curve, where the number one is pointing to on the left figure. For gap graded soils, this point corresponds to the particle size that is missing, that is the gap location, where the number one is pointing on the right figure. Step two, adjust the point of maximum curvature downward by 100%. That is, relocate the point of maximum curvature to the bottom of the graph at the 0% passing point. Because the procedure assumes 100% of the finer soil fraction is segregated out, or 100% of the unstable or erodible soil fraction is washed out. Step three, approximate the shape of the estimated gradation curve after segregation and washout. Kind of use your best judgment on that to kind of recreate the shape of the original curve. And then step four is estimate the D15 of the filter after segregation and washout using the adjusted gradation curve. Again, denoted by the number four on the screen on the left in the right figure. Lastly, it's important to consider where the finds may have migrated. For example, plugging something up or lying at the bottom of the layer and the associated impacts of that. Event tree, segregation or washout. This slide illustrates how the generic event tree can be adapted if the filter is susceptible to segregation or is internally unstable. In this example, a node was added to assess the likelihood of the filter being segregated or internally unstable. Given the filter is susceptible to segregation or internal instability, the next node assesses the likelihood of continuation based on the adjusted gradation as shown in the upper branches. Given filter is not susceptible to segregation or internal instability, the complementary next node assesses the likelihood of continuation for the stable filter and its unadjusted gradation as shown in the lower branches. More and less likely factors. The following table from Best Practices Manual can be used to help assess the likelihood of continuation of internal erosion. It can be used as a starting point but the risk team must develop project-specific more likely and less likely factors to guide subjective probability estimation. The factors in this portion of the table address filter presence and embankment zoning, filter gradation, and cracking. The factors in this portion of the table address materials downstream of the filter filter location, filter width, and segregation during construction. 
And the factors in this portion of the table address internal instability, gradation testing, and tow drains. Constricted or non-erodible exits. Constricted non-erodible exits. Up until this point, the presentation has discussed assessing the particle retention capability of filters. The last exit condition is a constricted or non-erodible exit. For erosion to continue, the open joint, defect, or crack in conduits, walls, or rock needs to be sufficiently open to allow the surrounding soil particles to pass through it. Likelihood of continuation. There are no commonly adopted criteria for assessing the likelihood of continuation, although some have used design criteria for the perforation size for drain pipes. Effective opening size of defects can be used to assess whether internal erosion will continue. Poorly designed or inadequately filtered under drains, tow drains, relief wells, or weep holes into which embankment or foundation materials can be eroded should be evaluated using similar opens, opening size considerations where applicable. Suggested criterion. Sherard concluded that uniform filters act similar to laboratory sieves with an opening sieve size approximately equal to D15 of the filter divided by nine, thus continuing erosion criterion. And that approximately 97 to 99% of the particles were finer than the D15 of the filter divided by nine. Fell et al. in their 2008 paper suggested criterion assumes that the Foster and Fell 2001 continuing erosion criterion applies to erosion into an open joint, defect or crack in the conduits, walls, tow drains, or rock foundations, and that crack width is equivalent to filter opening size of voids between particles in the filter. Other considerations. Constrictions that are retaining soils and preventing erosion need to be continuous to some exit point. Bedrock joints or fractures need to be continuous to an open face and not covered by alluvium. If extensive void space exists in coarse soils or bedrock, an open exit may not be needed, but sufficient storage space for eroded fine particles must be available. It is also important to consider the flow direction and likelihood of flow reversal. Let's do a quick overview of the toolbox. The filter evaluation for continuation spreadsheet toolbox has the following worksheets or tabs in it. One for the base gradation and one for the filter gradation. One for particle retention, uh, the no erosion condition based on the FEMA 2011 criteria. One for the method to assess filters not meeting modern filter design criteria based on the Foster and Felt 2001 methodology. One for the permeability criteria based on EM 1110-2-1901. And one for constricted exit. And here is our references. Primary references include Foster, Fell, Saganowitz, Sills, Roman, and Davidson. Uh, risk analysis for dam safety, a unified method for estimating probabilities of failure of embankment dams by internal erosion piping. FEMA 2011, filters for embankment dams, best practices for design and construction. And Foster and Fell 2001, assessing embankment dam filters that do not satisfy design criteria. That's all I've got for you on continuation. Thank you for your attention. And if there's any questions, comments, or discussion, uh, we'll do that now. Thanks.